Hello, I'm Emma from Mmm English. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for celebrating with me last week. It was so much fun. I was thinking that I don't really want to stop celebrating just yet. So I've got something super special to share with you today. During May this month, Mmm English subscribers will be able to join the Mmm English Grammar Challenge. And I'm inviting you to join the challenge to improve your English with me and give you the chance to win some really fun mm, English prizes, including mm, English t-shirts, mm, English courses, and a chance to win some conversation practice with me. It's super easy to join and a really good idea because just by participating, you'll be improving your English skills. So make sure you subscribe, that's the first step just down there, and then keep watching this video to find out how you can join the challenge. In this video, I'm going to share the 10 most common grammar mistakes that English learners make. When I'm reading your comments below my videos and I'm replying to your emails, I always notice the same mistakes that you consistently make. And through years of teaching English at language schools and at university, these are the same mistakes that a whole range of English learners make, from beginners right through to even advanced level students. They're just really common mistakes that you keep making again and again. Sometimes because, you know, the grammar is difficult to understand, but sometimes because these mistakes have never been properly corrected for you. So they become bad habits. They keep happening without you even realizing it. And if you don't recognize them, if you don't see the mistakes that you're making, then you can't fix them, can you? So I want to help you to do that. I want you to start seeing the mistakes that you're making. I want you to see it in your writing so that you can correct yourself. And then when you start doing that, you'll naturally be correcting yourself when you speak. The mm English Grammar Challenge will help you to practice and improve all of these mistakes, the ones that you sometimes make. So once you watch this lesson, make sure you sign up, you join the challenge, you get your friends to join too. A little friendly competition is a good thing <laughs> so that we can all have some fun together and improve your English skills while we're doing it. So what are the 10 most common grammar mistakes that English learners make? Number one, uncountable nouns. So you probably know that there are two types of nouns in English, countable and uncountable nouns. Countable nouns are easy. You can count them. <laughs> and when there's more than one, the noun becomes plural. We add an S. One apple, three cars, a million subscribers. <laughs> the noun becomes plural when there's more than one. And we can use the singular articles, a and an, when we're talking about just one of them. But uncountable nouns are different. They don't usually have a plural form. You can't use a singular article with them and you need to use quantifiers to help explain how much of the noun there is. The way that you use uncountable nouns in English sentences is completely different to countable nouns. Let's just compare apple, a countable noun, and advice an uncountable noun. I have an apple for you. I have a piece of advice for you. How many apples do you have? How much advice do you have? I have a few apples for you. I have a little advice for you. It's not just the noun that's important. The type of noun affects many other words in your sentence. 
So using the wrong words with the uncountable noun in an English sentence is a really, really common mistake. And it's easy to do without realizing that you're doing it. Perhaps you don't realize that a noun is uncountable. Mistake number two, irregular verbs. Now, these are also really common English mistakes. Difficult to master because there are no rules that you can learn to logically explain why one verb is regular and the other is not. Even though there are fewer irregular verbs than regular verbs, many irregular verbs are really, really common verbs. You can't escape them. You need to learn them. Number three, subject verb agreement. Subject verb agreement is as simple as it sounds. The subject and the verb in English sentences must agree. They must match. So why is it such a common mistake in English? Even my advanced English students sometimes make these mistakes as well. And it's simply because they've got into some bad habits. They don't realize that they're making these mistakes. That car looks expensive. Those cars look expensive. Paul is looking out the window. John and Tim are looking out the window. Do those students like to eat bananas? Does this student like to eat bananas? These mistakes are very easy to fix. Bad habits can be fixed, but you need to see them. So I'll explain more about this in detail during the mm English grammar challenge. Common mistake number four, auxiliary verbs. Yes, the three main auxiliary verbs in English, do, be, and have. They're very important and learning a little more about them is going to help you improve your English grammar a lot because the relationship between an auxiliary verb and the main verb in an English sentence is very clear and simple. The auxiliary verb do appears in the simple tenses. The auxiliary verb be appears in the continuous tenses and also in the passive voice. And the auxiliary verb have appears in the perfect tenses. This is one part of English that is really consistent. So if you're making any of these mistakes, we can fix them easily. So join me for the challenge and learn more about auxiliary verbs and fix these common grammar mistakes. Mistake number five articles. Which one should you use? When and why? Articles must cause the most headaches for English learners. The is the definite article. A and an are indefinite articles. The difference between definite and indefinite articles is the difference between talking about a specific noun and a general noun. If you asked me, can you pass me a pen? That means any of these pens, not a specific one. But if you asked me, can you pass me the blue pen? That only means this pen, none of the others. But sometimes you don't need to use an article at all. So it's easy to see why articles are some of the most common mistakes that English learners make. The good news is that there are some simple rules that you can follow to choose the right article. And I've got a few tips that I want to share with you during the challenge to help you learn a little bit more about articles and how to use them. Number six, prepositions. Words like in, on, at, by, with, for, you get my point. These words, they help to give information about time, location, and direction in English. Just like articles, they also cause a few headaches. 
Sometimes the same preposition can have different meanings depending on the context. If your keys are in the car, the meaning is different to at the car. But if you're in school, the meaning is pretty much the same as at school. I had a coffee at Helen's, that means at her house. Or I had a coffee with Helen, that means we had a coffee together, but it could have been anywhere. These tiny little words can influence the meaning of your English sentence significantly. But they are a challenge because the rules and reasons for using them are not always clear. Plus, you could be thinking about the correct preposition that's used in your own native language, but they don't translate directly into English. And this can be a problem too. Anyway, to get them right, you need to practice. And that's exactly what we'll do during the challenge. Number seven. We're going to talk about word order in questions. So asking questions, giving answers, it's the basics of a great conversation in English, in any language really. But one common mistake is using the wrong word order when you're asking questions. We can go shopping this afternoon. What you are cooking for dinner. Word order in English questions is a common grammar mistake. I see it a lot and I hear it even more often. And another thing, different types of questions in English use different intonation. So getting the structure and the intonation right is important if you want to sound natural like a native English speaker. The good news is that English questions are really consistent. They follow a clear structure. Question word, auxiliary verb, subject, and your main verb. If you remember these words in this order, your questions should always be correct. Mistake number eight, lucky eight. The present perfect tense. Now, this tense is a challenging one. There's the present perfect simple and the present perfect continuous. You can also use the words for and since with these tenses to help you express information about time. Now, the structure of a present perfect sentence is probably not the difficult part. You probably know that there's the subject, the auxiliary verb have, and the main verb in past participle form. But in the present perfect continuous, your past participle verb is been and it's followed by a verb in ing form. Don't forget to conjugate that auxiliary verb depending on the subject. So it's confusing because this tense is about the past and the present at the same time. It connects something that happened in the past to the present moment. And there are a few different ways that this can happen in English. So although it's complicated, it is a really commonly used tense in English. So you need to understand it. If you join the mm English challenge, I'm going to explain how to use this tense in more detail and help you to practice using it as well. Another mistake. This is number nine. <laughs> the difference between the past simple and the present perfect tense. Like I said, the present perfect is also about the past, which is confusing in itself, right? So why not just use the past simple to talk about the past? To understand when to use the past simple and when to use the present perfect tense, you need to think about time. Finished time and unfinished time. Last week is a good example of finished time. It's complete. It's over. But this week is unfinished. It's an example of unfinished time. There's still more of this week to come. It's not finished yet. So expressions of time are really important when you're using these two different tenses. 
yesterday, last week, last month, 1991, these are all examples of finished time, time that's complete. So you would use the past simple. But when you're thinking about a time period that is unfinished, like today, this week, this month, my life, use the present perfect. Again, I'll go over this with you during the challenge. Lastly, mistake number 10. And I wonder if this is a mistake that you sometimes make. Not all the time, but sometimes. When do you use adjectives that end in ed and ing? There is a big difference between he looks bored and he looks boring. I am interested or I am interesting. There doesn't seem to be much difference between these adjectives, but using them incorrectly in your sentence completely changes the meaning. Luckily, there are some simple rules to help you remember which one is the right one to use. Now, I want to help you improve your English and fixing these 10 common mistakes is a really good place to start. So come and take the mm English challenge with me. I'll explain all of these important English grammar points so that you can understand them. And then you'll be able to take a short quiz to check what you've learned. Joining the mm English challenge is really easy. Step one, just subscribe to this channel. To join the challenge, you must be a mm English subscriber. If you're not a subscriber already, just click that red button down there. Easy. Step two, go to this website. To join, you need to sign up and pay a dollar. Also really easy. Step three, complete the 10 lessons. Yeah, there are 10 lessons about the 10 most common mistakes that English learners make. I want you to fix these mistakes in your English. So I'll explain each of the grammar points and give you lots of examples and then you'll check your knowledge with a short quiz at the end of each lesson. So you'll study with me and improve your grammar skills and test your skills. It's gonna be super fun, get your friends to join in as well, and make sure that you complete all of the lessons by the end of May. If you do that, you could win one of the many English prizes. We're giving away t-shirts, English courses, and even conversation practice with me. So head over to the website to sign up. Let's do this. Do it now. I'll be back here next week on YouTube with another lesson for you. Bye for now.